Welcome back to What Are Tnibs with General Disturbance. This is a Jagdtiger 88. It's a tier 8 premium German tank destroyer. It's located on the north spawn of Erlenburg and it's under the command of 27 Bagpuss of Reborn. Well, the um, Jagdtiger 88, well, they ran short of the 128mm gun. And since they placed an extra order for these tank destroyers, uh, the Wehrmacht asked, well, could you fit an 88mm gun instead? And the 88mm has a much higher fire rate than the standard 128mm. It does less damage, of course. With the standard AP shells, it will do uh, 240 alpha, penetrating 212mm of armor. And, well, with the premium rounds, it will go up to 237mm. It's still the same 240 and with the HE rounds, it'll do 295 on 44 millimeters. It's just got a better fire rate, but it's still the same old Jagdtiger with vulnerable sides and rear. And of course, uh, very good armor at the front, so long as you hide the lower plate. Well, our KV-5s have decided they're going to go across the river and fight the enemy on their ground. And I have the feeling that Bagpuss is doing the same. He's trying to play this game with standard ammunition we've lost one of the KV-5s and I suspect well considering he's fighting a 252U and a Samoa he's in bad trouble well that tracks the 252 so he's obviously burned his repair kit already and you can see the prodigious fire rate of this uh, Yag Tiger. he hit the tracks again and the guy is tracked don't go for the space armor, gets the shot, kills the 252. But now he's got to deal with a KV-3, a Black Prince, and a King Tiger captured. Uh, didn't get the KV-3, and we just lost the KV-5 to their E-7. It's a much better gun than the 88s you'll find on other tanks, and we just lost the Commander. Just got clobbered by the M12. We can't see him at the moment, but he's off in the distance, obviously. Um, these guys are going to hide as much as they can because they know the Yag Tiger is actually quite dangerous. But of course, it's um, quite vulnerable, actually, as a, as a Yag Tiger if it's tracked. Because, of course, it's a fixed gun pointing forwards. If you track it, you can get behind it and kill it. That one's unfortunate. I don't think he was quite ready for that uh, tank to come out. Eagle 7's now trying to get involved. The KV-3 is going to try and hustle him to shoot. Yep, got that one in. don't think the KV-3 wanted that. And if he counts on like this, KV-3 is going to be toast. And that's exactly what he is. It's a very fast fire rate from this 88mm gun. Of course, the shells are considerably smaller, and of course, they're one piece shells, unlike the uh, 128mm rounds. Uh, the M12 is obviously on this side of the river, and he's hiding in the bushes right at the back of the cap. Well, that one, don't know where that went, but the Eagle 7 bounced off us. He really needs to get away before the RT keeps firing in again because the more he gets stunned and the more damage he takes to HE, the less likely he's going to be able to fight these tanks. The Black Prince actually is over the other side of the river. Okay, he hit the Eagle this time. Low roll. Oh, that was the M12 missing. Okay, so the M12's had a bad shot and he's just been taken out of the game by our Lynx 6x6. So the wheelie managed to get down amongst them. And that means that um, Bagpuss could move on and start going after the remainder of the tanks. You see, the Black Prince is the other side of the river, and our own Black Prince is on this side. And he, the Black Prince is trying to push that KV-3 wreck out of the way. Not sure why ba Black P uh, by Bagpuss is actually staying here at the moment. The M12 is gone, so he's got no worry there. The SU-12244 is gone. A 
He's trying to push the Rex out of the way so he can get past them. Oh, T-28's coming to sight. Now, the American tank destroyer. Very, very tough to kill those things. Aiming for the Capolas. He's trying to do it with standard AP and it is difficult to try to do that. That didn't pen. That landed, you can see, on the hull. That one did. That went through. Yeah, but that 128, he's a uh, T-28's got a 120mm gun. Okay, he's decided to pull back because he was taking a lot of damage. He can't fight without exposing his Capolas. Going, trying to go for the lower plate. Nope, not going to get through. Go for the Capolas, it's the easiest thing on this thing. And that's it. Yup. Go for the rear Capola on that one as well. Yep. No, that one didn't. Go for the nearer Capola. Hits the Pershing, or the Eagle 7 behind him rather, I should say. And we keep taking rounds, but that one was in the track. Keep hitting that Capola. No, try again. No, bounce. Oh, he went down. And the kill shot went to the AMX M 445 and the Eagle 7 went down to his shot. So he's got three kills now. And here comes the AMX M 445 There's only three enemies left now. An LT-432, a Super Hellcat, and an SU-14-2. Three and a half K of damage, it's not bad. But he's only got 180 hit points left. Doesn't want to get hit by a shell from that SU-14-2. There's a super hellcat. Has he got a shot? Oh, taken out the game. Scorpion G got him. Okay, the LT-432 is behind us on the way up to our cap and it looks to me like he might be trying to go after our arty. Steel weapon trade and the Peter are coming back to help. Well, he's in the cap, but I'm not so sure he's going to stay there. If he sees the GW Panther, who's very, very close by, then he'll probably try to go for the Pascucci's. He has left the cap, but it's because he's dead. And that only leaves one enemy left. It's the SU-14-2, the school bus, and he's in the southwest corner of the map. And the IS-2 shield is going after him. So we are capping and oh that's it end of battle so pretty damaged Yag Tiger 88 but it is a victory no premium ammo used let's have a look at the end of battle stats well first class tanker for 27 bank puss in the 88 pack 43 Yag Tiger he managed to get a shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle, a fire effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle, and he got a couple of battle hero medals. He got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game, and a steel wolf for blocking the most damage in the game. And his win eight from that one was 5,879, which is uh, super unicum standard and a bit more. Let's have a look at team score and see where he was. Well, he earned 3,477 hit points of damage in that game. The next highest score being the KV-5 with 2,406. Of course, he went in there balls deep with the, his teammate in the other KV-5. Uh, his platoon mate, rather. And, uh, well, he didn't get any damage whatsoever or any kills. He got uh, set upon fairly quickly. Uh, the next high scorer was the SU-14-2 on the enemy team with 2,138 hit points. When it came to kills, again, he's got the highest and he shares it with the Lynx 6x6. They both had three kills each. Two kills for the Scorpion G and the IS-2 Shielded and also for the Eagle 7 on the enemy team. And he picked up a Lever Slaves. Uh, when it came to base XP, yes, he's got the top in that one. So he's got the top in all three columns. 1,211 base for 27 Bagpus, 943 for the KV-5 and 816 for the IS-2 Shielded. 
He fired 30 rounds in that game, got 25 direct hits and 15 penetrations, damage of 3,477 hit points, all of it at close range, received 12 hits from the enemy in that game, 2 were penetrations, 9 non-penetrations and 4 hits by way of splash damage. Most of those were coming from the M12, who was fairly good but just wasn't getting enough damage to make it count. 2,610 hit points of damage blocked by armour. He damaged four of the enemy, killed three, and did 164 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, he earned 106,118 credits. And after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables, and remember, no premium ammo used at all, 49,851 credits profit. 1,816 XP, times two for the first victory, 182 for this being a premium vehicle, and 3,815 experience points altogether. So, the Yag Tiger. Um, well, it's an okay tank destroyer. It's got a very, very good fire rate, but the only thing is it is fairly vulnerable if somebody gets beside it or behind it. And, of course, that lower plate is also a fairly uh, weak spot. Uh, but apart from that, the gun is very good. It's a very fast fire rate. And if you can get your shells to count, as he was actually, even on the KV-3s and the um, uh, Eagle 7, he was making those shells count, uh, then it can be actually quite useful. You saw he, he actually got the shots in on the Object 252U. Mind you, he had lost a lot of damage. But you can see here that the three shots he fired earned 656 hit points of damage. And on the KV-3, he earned 934 hit points of damage. You can see it's not bad, actually. It's a Tier 8 premium, of course. But yes, it did take down a Tier 7 heavy tank. Uh, admittedly, must, a lot of shots actually went in the side. But you did see him take down that T-28 with five shots. Now, he didn't get the kill on the T-28. So somebody else jumped in and kill still. He says this as much. Five, four shots the entire battle. Yes, I suppose there were some kill stealers out there to try and steal the glory. But he put in a lot of shots on that guy. And he also well, blocked four shots from the T-28, which is pretty considerable if you think about the, the gun that the T-28 has. And he blocked those shots and still managed to do a lot of damage just firing in on the Capolas. So, very good game by Bagpuss. Well done. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. Let other people know that we exist. And thanks for watching.